Thank you very much, Raul and Scott, for the opportunity to speak today. I'll be speaking about banding a failed gastric bypass. I have no disclosures to make. Overview, um, focus specifically on this 15-minute talk on banding a failed gastric bypass. Introduction, risk and benefits of using an adjustable gastric band for a failed bypass, the techniques and the outcomes. I have to get to the outcomes or I'm going to hear, hear from Raul for the rest of the afternoon. And, uh, and then, of course, the conclusion. So the first question really is, what is a failure? What is a failure after a gastric by bypass? There are multiple def different definitions for failure, but what most people acknowledge right now is either failure to achieve 50% excess weight loss, patient who still has a BMI greater than 35 with or without comorbidities, and that's a, that's a discussion that some people have, and if, whether or not they still meet NIH criteria, um, and those people should be or can be considered a failure after gastric bypass. The real issue here is that failures have been described in about 15% of cases. This ranges from 5 to 25% of the cases um, and is not a trivial number. With the increasing numbers and, and proportions of gastric bypasses being done here and across the world, 15% of all those cases that may be a failure may be a candidate for reoperative consideration, revisional surgery, or revisional procedures, which we'll be talking about more later on, is a, is a serious number of patients. So the bypass was a failure. What do you do next? Um, there are a lot of different options. Revise the pouch, the stoma, or the limb length size. But then again, we don't really know what the perfect size or length of the stoma or the pouch or the limb lengths are. We think we may know, but we don't have data on that. You can revise to a BPD or a distal gastric bypass. And there are endoscopic procedures, which will be discussed later on by Dr. Thompson um, with regards to uh, suturing and plicating. Um, or as well as some experience with some injections of, uh, of, of different substances. I'll be focusing, focusing specifically on banding a failed gastric bypass uh, and will not be going into all the, uh, the different nuances of revisional surgery. With regards to uh, banding a, a bypass, what are the, the, the risks and benefits? Um, and really, a lot of these are theoretical because right now, as we'll show later on, we don't have a lot of data to prove a lot of these, uh, of these things. But what are the theoretical benefits of, of, of putting a band in for a failed bypass? Well, one is there's no new staple line. So it decreases the risk of leaks, of stenoses, of bleeding, all the things that we are most concerned about. There's no resection. So there's less chance of making that pouch, that delicate pouch that's relying on the left gastric uh, artery, less chance of making that ischemic. There's no malabsorptive sequelae. And that really has been the Achilles heel of some of the, uh, uh, the other revisional operations, including the distal gastric bypass and the BPD. One of the potential benefits is adjustable. You're able to titrate to uh, optimize the restrictive aspect for the patient. And another concept here is now if you have a band, an external reinforcement, it could ha perhaps help prevent recurrence of either uh, continued pouch dilation or stoma dilatation. And so not only the fact that it's adjustable, but it's this external reinforcement over the prox proximal aspect of a gastric pouch um, um, is potentially something down the line that could even prevent further problems. Well, what about the theor theoretical risks from banding a bypass? Well, it's still a tough dissection and exposure in a reoperated field. And they're the usual risks associated with the bands. And this really could be the biggest Achilles heel of the, the concept of banding a failed gastric bypass. The risk of infections. So you're already in a reoperative field. The risk of, of a gastric leak or, or injury is, is not insignificant. And the risk of infections is something that has to be looked at. Port and tubing failures, they happen. Erosion. Erosion, especially when you're over a reoperative field and you're over a staple line or near a staple line in this area, and how you're actually going to wrap the, the, the stomach over it the risk of slippage, um, and the, the mechanics are very different when you have a, a band over a bypass versus a band over a stomach, which is plicated at least anteriorly. Dysphagia, intolerance, need for explantation, and the long-term failure rates, which we're now appreciating more and more from the, uh, from the European literature. One of the risks, too, is, is that might not be the problem. So if the stoma size and the pouch size was not the reason the patient failed the bypass, but other reasons that we might not know, then this mechanical restrictor procedure may not be of further benefit. Um, so I think the careful uh, uh, characterization of the patients 
in their consideration for this operation is something that needs to be uh, taken into, uh, into account here, specifically what their anatomy looks like, what the previous operation, what you think the reason might be that they failed. Um, and failed being defined as we discussed before, the not losing the weight or, or, uh, or getting a BMI less than 35. What about the techniques? So um, with regards to the uh, adjustable gastric band, this was first described in 12 patients in uh, obesity surgery in 2001 by Kaiser and their group. It was an open technique that was described, a blunt finger dissection in order to, uh, to place the band with um, two 2 prolines at the anterior lesser and greater curves in order to, uh, to uh, hold the, the band in place anteriorly. Um, Bessler and his group have described their initial uh, results were in 2005, and they were discussing about eight to nine patients. Uh, three initially were open, and the following six were laparoscopic, placing a 10 centimeter lap band at that time, um, and using a pars flaccida technique. Um, this is a diagram from that publication. And again, here you can see that the, the small gastric pouch here, the, uh, the band placed across the pouch, proximal to the gastrojejunostomy, uh, the port, and the rest of things held in place here with, some, with the two sutures holding it in place. Similar techniques have been described by uh, George Fielding and his group, uh, describing with 11 patients using the lap band VG system, um, and again using the pars flaccida technique. Um, another technique paper was uh, published by Dougal Heath. Uh, and the difference here was that he, he placed the band distally around the lower gastric pouch, uh, more like the uh, Foby or Capella band, which I'll talk about in a little bit with regards to the fixed bands. Um, and this was a, 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 wasn't the initial plan going into the operation, but um, thought he would describe that as well. So in placing the band distally around the lower gastric pouch, one centimeter proximal to the gastrojejunostomy. And other techniques include fixed bands. Um, various materials have been used, Marlex, polypropylene, silastic rings. Um, this concept is similar to the banded gastric bypass as advocated by Phoebe and Capella and a few others. Um, describe a six to 6.5 centimeter fixed silastic band is how Phoebe describes it, although other people have used Marlex or other uh, uh, fixed uh, non-adjustable material. And uh, as initially described, it's not more than two centimeters above the gastrojejunostomy, so what is considered a more distal uh, banding of the pouch. This is a, uh, a diagram of the, the, the uh, Phoebe pouch procedure. Um, and again, here you can see that there's the uh, silastic ring, um, no less than two centimeters above the, uh, the gastrojejunostomy here. Um, with regards to the outcomes, um, the, um, with regards to the adjustable gastric bands, um, I'm sorry, I was, with regards to the fixed uh, banded gastric bypass, um, uh, Mark Bessler and his group actually did a, a prospective randomized control trial to look at the efficacy of the fixed banded gastric bypass. Now, there, are, there isn't a lot of literature out there with regards to the fixed um, banded uh, uh, bypass is a revisional operation, so these are actually primary operations. Um, but again, as we learned earlier from, from uh, uh, Rahul and Scott here, that uh, uh, repeating history might not be the, the best thing to do if it wasn't a, a benefit to begin with. But here we see in Be Bessler's study um, a, a randomized control trial of banded versus unbanded, 44 or 46 patients in each arm, super obese population, seven centimeter Marlex mesh, uh, placed, you know, 1.5 to 2 centimeters above the GJ, like was described previously. Um, and the results from that study, no difference in complications, no erosions, no difference in change in comorbidities, and then no change in percent excess weight loss in two years. However, they did find at the three-year time uh, that there was a, a, uh, a, an improvement in the banded group with percent excess weight loss at three years. A smaller, a smaller number of patients at that time point, but 73.4% versus 57 0.7%. Another randomized control trial um, has been published looking at 30 patients in each group, um, again with a, a Marlex mesh, a fixed gastric band, and there was no difference in outcomes at two years. Again, the fixed banded gastric bypass. How about the adjustable gastric band? Um, the most recent and uh, largest study is, is, is by Mark Bessler. And, um, and his group, and it's reporting intermediate results on 22 or 23 patients 
treated from 2002 to 2007. So this was just out in January of this year um, in SWORD. And they reported three major complications requiring reoperation: one partial small bowel obstruction related to the band tubing, one band slip, and one recurrent port infection. Um, but they also commented on uh, one gastric injury where the patient became too ill to include in the rest of the study. So uh, that's why I put the 23. That was the editor, editor's comment there of uh, the 23rd patient, um, perhaps with the intention to treat, could have been included in that first cohort. And they also commented on one erosion which was not explanted. And again, the, the parentheses are mine. I put yet there because uh, the, uh, the natural history of an eroded band will likely need to come out, I believe. So overall, the complication rate, 5 out of 23 or 22%. Um, and so if one of the benefits of potentially banding a, a failed gastric bypass is low complication rate, 22% um, is, is uh, not a trivial number. And it's not unlike what we see in other uh, uh, revisional laparoscopic procedures. Um, these are the results with regards to the decrease in excess weight loss. Um, they have the combined findings here on the top in the pink. And below are the revisional, uh, uh, after the revision, the percent excess weight loss after revision. And these are actually favorable outcomes. They have uh, findings from three months up to uh, 60 plus months. As we get out in the larger and the longer dates here, of course, there are fewer patients. And there's variable percent follow-up. And knowing, knowing what the non-responders did is always a key question in looking at a study like this. Um, but regardless, we see a pretty favorable curve where the patients do uh, seem to continue to lose weight and at least keep it off up to five years over the course of the duration of the study. Um, George Fielding also showed a, 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 a published his results in surgical endoscopy, um, findings with 11 patients, one complication, it was a flip port, 100% follow-up, and so that's, uh, uh, you get rid of those other issues I was just referring to, follow-up mean of 13 months with a mean excess weight loss of 20 0.8%, but you can see that plus or minus 16.9% is a pretty good range um, with regards to those patients. Further publications by Chin and others, um, 10 patients. This was an open technique, but they used a pars flaccid placement of the band, three minor complications, including port revisions or hematomas, and, uh, and follow-up that looks actually pretty, pretty uh, uh, interesting. One year at 24%, two years at 48.7, and three-year follow-up at 66 but again, look at these numbers, eight patients, five patients, one patient. So in summary here, um, it seems like the adjustable gastric band is a reasonable approach to consider for patients with a failed gastric bypass. There are certainly some theoretical benefits over revision, other revisional procedures that one could take into account. However, I caution you with regards to the data that I just showed you here. These are very small series, up to 22 patients um, in the largest series here, They're by very experienced groups. Um, and they report a questionable low complication rate. Um, they're advocating them low, but one might question whether or not uh, a 22% is a low complication rate in this group. And, and it's really unclear whether similar results can be replicated in other surgeons' hands um, in, a, in a broader population. So in summary, the intermediate term follow-up, though limited by small numbers and limited percent follow, suggests a, a reasonable percent excess weight loss, but really more data is needed. More cases, more surgeons, more hospitals, longer term efficacy and complication rates. And I think, you know, so we don't rewrite the course in history, looking at the European experience with the band, um, it, it, one should have some reservations about considering it in this uh, a challenging patient population. Thank you very much for your time. The next speaker is